You all ready to join me today in our trip to outer space? Albert Shivers. The Matrix doesn't happen. That's very true. The general concept is that creativity flourishes in an in a atmosphere of freedom. I'd like to ask you about um, some standout races, whether you've seen them in person or whether it was a broadcast that you watched. I think that every fan has them. I certainly do. Um, what might be one or two of some races that either you, you think about from time to time or one that you enjoy going back to watch again? What, what might a few of those be? I have Daytona 500. Um, that one, I, I mentioned this in my, my broadcast criticisms video last year, and it's, it's still one of my all-time, in terms of fantastic camera show, in terms of a production, if you're thinking about a race as a movie production, and this was even more the case for me because um, in 2005, um, they actually broadcast, they live-streamed the Daytona 500 in a couple movie theaters in the U.S., and they oh, sold wow. tickets to it. And the only two places they showed it, I think it was, I think it was, it was three places. I think it was in New York, it was in Chicago, and then it was at the Irvine Spectrum, which is in uh, Orange County, and that just happened to be like 10 minutes from where I was going to college. Like, okay. it was just uh, down there. And you couldn't buy tickets for it, um, initially, you had to win them in a drawing, and basically anybody entered, and it was like through the local Fox affiliate. So we entered that, and basically, I don't know if they had enough interest in it. So basically, anybody that entered it got tickets. So my brother and I were there for that, and so we got the experience of watching that race in a movie theater, as if it was a movie, and it fit it perfectly because there's this shot. I mean, the last the, the last few laps of that race, where you got Tony Stewart's dominating the, most of that race. Then suddenly, Dale Jr. hasn't been a factor the entire day. And you got some murmuring in the crowd there with us there, too. And they're kind of getting into it also. Mm -hmm. They see him start to kind of work up there. And there's this moment where they're side by side. And he's trying to get in front of Stewart. And then he does. And, and Daryl Walter's like, he made it. And then, like, <laughs> you hear the crowd. The crowd's right. going nuts over the, the speakers. And there's this wonderful shot of the backstretch grandstands. And it pulls back. And you see the cars coming down, the hole in the mail on the backstretch, and Junior leading the way. And then him moving up the track and hitting the, the travel. It's just beautiful. It's, it's everything. It's first and foremost, it's, it's super speedway racing is supposed to, the way it's supposed to sound with those, like, those cross by banners and all that. Right. Um, the cars sound amazing. They look amazing. You got all the big, all the big names. Even though I'm not a big name guy. I mean, you had you had Tony Stewart, Dale Jr., Jeff Gordon, Jimmy Johnson, Kurt Busch, uh, all those guys up there, and right behind them you had a, you had Rusty Wallace and Mark Martin, who were just announcing their retirement season that year. Of course, for Mark, the plans changed, but at the time we thought this is going to be their last Daytona 500. They're working their way up, and yeah. in between them are Scott Riggs, who's come out of nowhere to have like this tremendous speed weeks there and trying to just close it out. And Kevin LePage, who had no sponsorship on a Dodge that John Carter fielded until a Patron Tequila came on board, mm -hmm. and he's about to get like you know the first top ten, to, you know, since he drove for Roush. Um, and this whole mix, and they don't wreck; they all yeah. keep it together. Yes. And they got this this huge finish. And Jeff, you know, I'm not a big Jeff Gordon fan, but Gordon wins the 500. But any one of those guys could have won it. Yeah, that's one. I may not watch it, you know, start to finish. Although I think I think the whole race is fine. I don't get some criticism for a lot of debris cautions, but that those last few laps are just magical, just magical. I don't think that race gets near enough credit for being. It, it's perfect. And you talk about Larry McReynolds. I mean, he was very much a big part of that too. It was, it was Mike Joy, Larry McReynolds, Darren Waltrip, all three of them absolutely firing on all cylinders. Uh, production hitting it out of the park. It shows that they can do it. They can do it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, can, you can take Talladega's coming up this weekend. If they, you know, if they, if they just kind of looked at that for inspiration, um, even if the race doesn't turn out to be nearly as competitive with you know thirty eight cars versus forty three or whatever, you know, it would. I think it would help a lot. You know, but that's that one stands out. That one stands out for sure. There's other ones for sure, but for brevity, I'll just mention that one. I like Albert, I like Albert. and the others are okay. Are okay. But I, but I really, really want to go home. home.